Master Koga, the leader of the Yiga clan, would much rather spend his days having his followers do all the hard work while he lounges and snacks on bananas. However, the occurrence of a common enemy has driven him to the side of his former mortal enemies. In Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, Master Koga has a self-destructive playstyle that can be hard to come to grips with at first. However, once fully understood, Koga can quickly become one of the most powerful characters on your roster. Let's find out what this goofy, yet surprisingly competent ninja is hiding. Koga's regular attack string consists of five attacks. He will slash to the left, to the right, kick a square-shaped barrier forwards, roll a big boulder forwards, and then finish by lifting the boulder and then slamming it down onto an enemy. Although Koga's regular attack string is one of the shortest in the game, I do like how deliberate each attack is. This makes it very easy to read and time out your later strong attacks. On top of this, as we'll get into in a moment, a large part of Koga's playstyle is managing his stress meter, this bar below his health. But this regular attack string is one of the few moves he has that will not push his stress any higher. Let's look at his other basic attacks. For his regular dashing attack, he will land back on the ground out of his dash to do a slashing attack. And for his strong dashing attack, he will flip and land with the slam while going right back to his dash. Just like with everyone else, you want to use his regular dash attack when you want to stop and dig into a fight, and his strong dash attack to pick up KOs without having to slow down. For his regular aerial attack string, Koga will spin his body forwards twice before finishing with a body slam and upon landing, it will increase his stress by about 30%. For his strong aerial attack, Koga will summon two Yiga boulders and throw them diagonally down to the ground. Compared to other people on the cast, Koga's aerial attack mechanics are slightly backwards. Usually, it is the strong aerial that immediately brings your character down to the ground again, and usually it's the job of the third regular attack to let you fit it in before the end. However, this is simply not the case here. Let's move on to his Sheikah Slate runes. Starting with his stasis, Koga will lock himself and enemies nearby while a small gang of Yiga clan members begin to build up everything's momentum before the effect ends and Koga and the others go flying. Koga himself landing flatly on the ground and also raising his stress meter by about 50%. Similar to Daruk and Bow of Light Zelda, this is one of the only stasis runes in the game with animations that cannot be dodge cancelled out of at all. Usually, this would be a really bad sign for the character, since time locking weak point gauges is such a huge part of Age of Calamity's combat. However, due to Koga's unique mechanic, this is really not a big deal for him at all. Once you learn how to utilize a few hidden mechanics of his that allow him to never have to worry about becoming overstressed again, and no, it's not his bananas by the way, Koga is never short of a way to start doing weak point damage. This, in effect, makes his stasis a non-key part of his playstyle, and instead it works more like the other runes. It's useful for countering enemy attacks, but doesn't have to be used for anything else. Next up, for his Cryonis rune, Kogo will lift a three-part Cryonis pillar out of the ground while doing a little dance on top of it. While the pillar comes out slow compared to other Cryonis runes that bring up ice blocks underneath the characters, Koga's Ice Pillar has an additional mechanic of allowing you to send out the pieces one by one in order to create a simple ranged attack. All you have to do is move off the pillar yourself and start hitting it with your weapon. For his Magnesis Rune, Kogel will fish up a bunch of metal objects and hold them in front of him, doing consistent damage and sucking up anyone within its hitbox. While channeling this rune attack, Koga is completely invincible. Note that if there are no metal weapons for Koga to take from his enemies, then this rune will simply do nothing. But it also won't start up your rune cooldown either. Last up, we come to Koga's Remote Bomb Rune, which will have him create a spot just in front of him, from which multiple small bombs all start erupting out of. These blow up in a large area around the spot, and if you hit an enemy who is weak to this rune, the subsequent bombs are probably going to do a lot of weak point damage. This can seriously be one of the most devastating remote bomb runes in the entire game. With Koga's basic attacks out of the way, next up we're going to be tackling his stress meter and how you can completely take control of it. 
As I stated before, many actions, such as his stasis rune or final regular aerial attack, will add different amounts of stress to Koga's meter. And if you press the unique action button, ZR, before it is close to the end, Koga will simply charge up his bar by about 5%. There are technically three different points of stress charge, although only the final one really matters mechanically. With almost no charge, Koga will look the same. Once you're at over 70% stress, the bar will begin glowing and Koga's hair will begin flashing a bright red. At 95% stress, Koga's bar and hair will begin to flash even faster, indicating that he is ready to do his big glowy blast. In other words, a massive aimable face laser that you can use to target an enemy's natural weak point, while also doing a fantastic amount of damage to them while stun locking them the entire time. You might need to adjust your aim slightly in order to stay on your chosen enemy, but while channeling this laser, Koga can't be knocked out of it, and he's also completely immune to damage. While this is an incredible unique action, the other side of the coin is, of course, if Koga's stress bar goes past 100%, he will go completely out of control and crash defenseless on the ground shortly afterwards. Or, as the game calls it, having a brief, pathetic tantrum. Fortunately, with not even decent timing to be honest, Koga is able to cancel out of this failing animation and go right into a big glowy blast. All you have to do is hit the unique action button when he's spinning out in order to regain your ground and start firing out another massive beam. You actually have about a two second window where Koga will be somersaulting or spinning out in order to press the button. And although this might seem like a tight margin, two seconds is actually a lot of time when it comes to just pressing a single button. Once you get the hang of using his unique action in this time window, you will never have to worry about overstressing again, and can utilize Koga just like the rest of the cast, but with the benefit of having an extremely destructive laser beam every couple of attacks. This does require players to be slightly more attentive than normal, but to be honest, this isn't that much to ask for, especially when the payoff is as incredible as it is with Koga. With this in mind, let's move on to his strong attacks. Due to having such a short regular attack string, Koga is of course going to have less strong attacks than others, but all of them are able to be extended up to a total of three times. I'm going to mention about how much stress is added through using these attacks, but keep in mind that you can avoid a lot of the stress buildup by simply dodge canceling out of them early. For his first strong attack, Koga will spin around while taking out a banana and then bravely eat it. After doing this, his body and stress bar will glow yellow, indicating that he is now in a state of joy that will prevent any tantrums if his stress happens to go over 100%. If you continue to press the button, Koga will eat a second and third banana, and then will finally eat a fourth and fifth banana. Koga is also able to quickly transition to this move after any of his subsequent strong attacks. If you've unlocked his upgrade in the post game, Yiga clan members will appear in front of Koga to defend him during his banana breaks. The first banana he eats will create this stress preventing glow for about 13 seconds, and extending this to the third banana will simply renew it to the same amount of time. If fully extended to the fifth banana, this protection will last slightly longer, going on for about 20 seconds. While I like the idea of this banana mechanic, the unique action technique that I just talked about previously pretty much completely invalidates the entire purpose of this move. It is useful while you're still learning how to time his beam attacks, but it's also something that you should stop using as soon as possible. Mechanically, it is just a total waste of time. It is funny though. Moving on, for his second strong attack, Koga will do a hip thrust forward, raising his stress meter by about 15%. The second attack of this will have him summon up a large metal ball and throw it, with this part upping the total stress to about 30%. After laughing at his foe, he will elongate this once more by appearing in the air to do a large horizontal slash. From here, you can then use any of his aerial attacks. And if you do his three regular aerial attack string, by the end of all of this, Koga's stress will be increased by about 60%. 
This attack string is good for getting Koga naturally in the air, but honestly, it is one of my least used attacks with him. Next up, for his third strong attack, Koga will summon in three Yiga clan members to carry him around while rushing forward, damaging anything that they run into. If you extend this move, Koga will use a banana as incentive to make his clan members run faster, stomping louder all the way. And if extended again, he will finish this by falling off as the members run off without him. If you let the attacks end naturally, Koga will fall off after the first or second part, adding about 30% or 40% stress respectively. Due to this attack not increasing his stress at all if you fully extend it, it winds up being one of his best ways to clear out crowds without having to worry about his stress meter at all or needing to remember to dodge cancel out of anything. When it comes to having general mobile damage, such as against bosses or small foes alike, it isn't necessarily his best option. For his fourth strong attack, Koga will summon a clone of himself that accidentally punches him. This will add about 30% stress, and if extended, him and the clone will struggle for a bit, upping the stress total to about 70%, before finishing with his clone spinning him around, which will then push his stress to about 90%. When fully extended on an empty stress meter, this attack will have him just short of a big glowy blast, taking two presses of ZR to immediately start it. And if done with even just a small amount of stress, it will either have him just one button press away or push him right into the failing animation. As long as you're able to land the tantrum cancel, this attack is incredible. And on top of this, certain points in it will force out enemy weak point gauges, stunning them out of big animations along the way. If your enemy is stunned naturally, for example after a Sheikah Slate rune counter, this is also one of his better weak point gauge clearers on top of that. For his fifth and final strong attack, Kogo will begin balancing on a rolling boulder, damaging anything under it while he is fully controllable. If extended, Kogo will summon in a larger boulder, which will also force exposed weak points against larger enemies when this happens. If fully extended, Kogo will bring in an even larger metal ball before losing his balance and ultimately being crushed under it. If you don't extend this after the first part, Kogo will be crushed and gain about 50% stress. Or if you don't extend on the second part, the same will happen and he will get 75%. If you fully extend this, his stress meter will always go straight to 100%, forcing an instant failing tantrum animation. So although this attack is great, you really need to be good at the tantrum cancel in order to have it not actively work against you. Due to this being very controllable mobile damage that also forces out weak points at certain moments, it's very easy to roll right up to a larger enemy and just start going around them in a tight circle. If your enemy misses you at first, then you'll just be doing damage to them completely freely, while at the same time stunning them out of any large attacks that they might be doing and getting a free weak point smash if you happen to break their gauge, since you'll already be nearby and already be mashing X. If this happens, you also technically cancel out of the move and will not have any stress meter gain to worry about. With all of Koga's attacks covered, let's move on to look at his weapons and weapon builds next. Master Koga has three possible weapons, and going from weakest to strongest, they are his Eightfold Blade, Vicious Sickle, and Demon Carver. I'm going to put up a chart now to show each of these weapons hidden level 25 and 30 seals, but for a weapon build suggestion, I'm going to be focusing on his Demon Carver. This weapon's hidden skills are strong attack damage and chance of landing shockwave, a star and square shaped seal. To go along with either one of these, and to get the maximum damage bonus, you could feasibly give Koga either three more attack speed seals or three more strong attack damage seals. For whichever one of these you focus on, you can just include one of the other. Personally, I prefer the strong attack damage setup, but again, that's just my preference. Also, although I don't always mention this, you could just focus on one of these entirely. Even though this would leave one seal unmatched, you would simply have plus 15 damage instead of the max plus 20 damage, which is not that much to give up. And just like that, we've reached the end of Master Koga. Let's go ahead and wrap everything up. When first playing as Koga, it instantly became clear to me that he was going to be the Zant of this game. And by that I mean his playstyle is a successor to how Zant played in the original Hyrule Warriors. 
Zant's fighting style, like Koga, seems self-destructive until you learn how to harness it. But while Zant's mechanics remained difficult to master even to an experienced player, there is very little to overcome for Koga before he becomes a totally solid and extremely powerful warrior. I will just be honest, I love Koga's playstyle. Even before I learned how to tantrum cancel him, playing as him was so much fun for me. There's just so much flavor in everything he does. The fact that I later discovered that Koga is one of the most powerful warriors in the game was simply the cherry on top. There isn't any ambiguity here. Koga is an absolute powerhouse, and with the right knowledge, the player is always able to turn his own weaknesses into their remarkable strength, as is the way of the ninja. So, what are your thoughts on Koga? Personally, it was a pleasure to get another reason to deep dive into this playstyle, and I can't recommend it enough. If there was anything big that I forgot about, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll be making a pinned comment on this video for any details that I left out or didn't happen to notice. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I hope to see you next time. Special thanks goes out to my top patrons DW7 Still Rules, Henry Gutierrez, Peeve Delatias, Radian Archiver, Ryan Poe, and True Tactician, as well as to all of my other patrons. Thank you all very much.